Rick Perry is very much for dismantling federal authority and granting authority to the states. He's a, he is, at heart, always been a state's rights person. And that's why you know, even he, when he was asked, Mr. Perry, what do you think of New York legalizing gay marriage? He said, that's great That's for New York's yeah. decision. Exactly. And, 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 the, and the article, oh my God, how dare you? He is a state's rights person. What is good for New York is good for New York. Uh, I, uh, you know, on that note, since you brought up the fags, um, I, I don't even know if that's the politically correct term, and I don't really care. Um, that's another issue, I'm sure, because we were talking earlier about, you know, the religious right and the liberal left and everything. I am sure, aside from the budget and taxes, and I'm sure some people will throw immigration in there just to make it a galvanizing issue. Are you for the terrorists? How dare you be? You know, it's like, because the whole point of this election is going to be a galvanizing. But I'm sure one of the wedge issues that's going to be thrown in there is the fags. Uh, so, um, you and I have and talked Perry, about this. Perry, I will tell you right now, Perry would make a, a gay issue a federal. I, I, man, I will tell you right now that I would. I, I, I would be vehemently mad. I trust him because of his state rights. And that means if he's president and a state says they want to legalize gay marriage, that he won't step in because he believes in state's rights. Well, no, I say that that's the thing. Yeah. The, it, it, um, I personally have never understood why, uh, why anybody gives a shit about the whole bag thing I, in the United I, States. Because exactly. the, the reality is the only, where it became a problem is in the 20s in the United States, the federal authority, but before the 1920s, really for the most part, most marriages were recorded religiously. You know, it was put in the family Bible. So you know, the, the, but it had nothing whatsoever to do with federal authority or really most local governments. Now there were lo local governments that had issues dealing with. Uh, marriage, but it had no federal authority really before that. And when we intermingled that bullshit and mixed law and marriage and the definitions of that bullshit, that's where we went. That's no, where this got all. Let me stop you there. That, no, you missed the point. The the actually marriage was came from the 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 a larger income entity because their incomes were combined. Exactly. And which then, put them yeah. in the higher tax bracket which increased their tax bill. Oh, okay, okay. I, I misunderstood you then. Because to me, at the state level, not a religious point of view, a state point of view, we shouldn't give a shit who marries who or, or enters into a, a contract of merging financial assets. And the federal government didn't care until the 20s for the reason exactly. you're talking yeah. about. We should totally... Uh, the idea of marriage... Marriage shouldn't even be in the lexicon of the, of the state, period. No. It, 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 I refuse to be the state forcing churches to recognize... Well, no, and see, that's the reverse side of this. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, pro, the pro <laughs> Yeah, because, wait a minute, let me get to this. My, my, my very close and dear friend, um, in the end, would love for societal acceptance. That's the... That is the last and ultimate argument of this whole thing, of which they know damn well will never happen. We still will never rid ourselves of prejudice and bigotry. It's just a human thing. But our, our law, as you just said, has no place in even using the word marriage because it's a tax scam and a story. Mm -hmm. any, it, any two people should be able to enter into a contract if they wish. If, 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 if it's my brother and myself, because we decided not to get married, and our economic situations and the choices we made have put, put us in a position where it's advantageous for he and I to become an economic entity together as brothers, we should be allowed to. If, if it's me as a gay male, and I fall in love with another male, and I want to enter into a financial contract with them and have all the economic uh, benefits of having a, a combined economic contract, then they should stop me. If it's like my aunt, who has lived with her best friend for 
I think, 20-something years, she shouldn't be prevented from joining in an economic contract with her best friend if it means cheaper health care or whatever, you know, whatever. And I think it's asinine for the law to even have marriage in its lexicon and dictate or us to even try to say what a marriage is by law. What the, that is, it's irrelevant to law. Law is, is in the purpose of an economic contract and an economic, uh, I, I call it, because that's exactly what we are, as a marriage, to the law we are nothing more than an economic contract. No, that's, that's not entirely true. It, there's the economic implications but there's also, there's also, no, no, there are also, why, uh, uh, you like to reduce everything to economics, but there is economics. Uh, oh, okay, but let's, uh, I, I'm going to, okay, setting aside people who didn't go to school for economics and getting into the way normal people look at things, most people don't consider their housing situation to be an economic issue, even though you could argue at its fundamental level it is. It is economic. Uh, 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 okay, 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 okay. But, but let's look at it like a normal person looks at it for a minute, Marcel. <laughs> it's like a normal person looks at it as a housing situation. And one of the reasons that that becomes such an issue is there are numerous places in the country, and again, these, these laws should not exist, it shouldn't be on the thing, but, uh, and some of them are hangovers for, discrim for, dis for old discrimination laws, but basically they've put laws on the books that says people who are unrelated or not married cannot share residences in certain zoned areas in which case uh, yeah 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 in which case you could move it's like in other words if you're married y'all can share the apartment but if you're not and you're not related it's not allowed because you're in violation yes. of zoning and, and, yes you're getting at what i was actually going to try to finish up on we have no business like in insurance forms and saying spouse or whatever there's no there is no business and, and, and see, this relies on even what I even declare insurance. I mean, because, see, I, when I argue, I have exponential factors that will probably never get iterated in this show, but what will get iterated in others, but that I guarantee you that I am consistent in what I believe in. Uh, if, if I were totally to have, uh, you know, the, all the time to explain, because everything is interdependent. But in the, in the root core of things, what you are getting at is this. Yes, there are moral laws on the book. And even Republicans have tried to make a morality out of the law. And I asked them, why? Because on the flip side of the coin, I will defend them in saying that the government has no business in telling the churches on who should they, they should recognize as a marriage. No, no, it, it, no if, if, a church, if a church wants to consider homosexuality a sin, that's between the church, the members of the church, and God. I, you know, that's between those people to straighten out. If you don't agree with that church's philosophies, you have freedom of religion. And if you're, if you, and I feel, I genuinely do feel sorry for people who are true followers of a faith but are ostracized by it. And that's unfortunate when that happens. But again, that's between you as a follower of that faith and that faith. Right. That is exactly. not. I, I grant you the power to change the church that you wish to change by federal authority. I am not of that person. If, yeah. if, if people think that I would actually use federal authority to, to supersede church church's viewpoint on what they see, they're mistaken. I am simply saying... Well, and that's actually, that would actually literally be a direct violation of the First Amendment. Yep. I am, I am, I am saying that the law can, cannot use marriage in its lexicon, and therefore cannot define anything as what is marriage in its lexicon. And it's... Because the law has nothing really to do with that aspect of morality. A contract is a contract regardless. And a church, which has a tremendous amount of aspects on a certain points, and its perspective of morality cannot be dissuaded or told that they're doing something illegal or forced to do something that they don't believe. End of story. Yeah. Well, no, it's like I said. It, it should basically be removed. Uh, it's it's it should be a, it should literally be a non-issue across the board. Unfortunately, due to a lot of bad laws getting on the books, due to a lot of things being commingled that shouldn't be, it, it's it's been made a needlessly complex issue. Yeah. 
Uh, unfortunately. Just, just friends with Doc to talk because we have monopolized this totally. He actually is no longer with us. <laughs> left? I don't know when he left, but he's offline. So either his internet conked out or he left. You're standing from my perspective because you hired the illegals in your home and you knew for it about it for a year. Oh, shit. And the idea that you stand here before us and talk about that you're strong on immigration is on its face the height of hypocrisy. Woo! <laughs> I'm looking forward to finding your facts on that because that just doesn't what the facts are. Again, Rick, again, you have the word you I'm still in the newspaper. The newspaper. I'm still in the newspaper. You've got 30, 30 seconds. Five minutes. This is the word you work here because I get 60 seconds. No, but the man in the day and I'm going to 30 seconds to respond, right? They want to hear. Let him talk, Rick. Let him talk. You say, you knew what you did. You're just going to keep talking. You didn't want me to finish with my life to say. I love that they call those a debate because they're anything but. What? What did you say? I said I love that they call those a civil debate because they're anything but. Yeah, and I understand that. We're going to get tested. You want to understand how children vote? What did you say? And I understand that. to do with, uh, what is it, libertarian well, ideals of, you know, basically, you know, hands off and... You can't. Look, man, you cannot wait till all the problem is on your front lawn. I agree with it. That's one of the things I happen to disagree with on the libertarians. I'm sorry. Every time you try and be an isolationist, trouble finds you anyways. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's a very sovereign country, just like the, the Palestinian authority. It's not being afraid to do it. I ran in 1994, the same year lived in, in, in Massachusetts. He ran as a liberal to the left of Kennedy and lost. I ran as a conservative against James Carville and Paul the... That's a bullshit argument. All I knew was a staunch Democrat, so for Gary. So far, I mean, see, that kind of shit I don't give a fuck about because you, you're, a, you're a, you are, you are free to change your ideals. Well, and I'm going. If you want to know how someone's going to act in the future, look how they act in the past. I mean, so, Smith, when you were the governor, well, that was a contradiction because Rick Perry, you were a Democrat in the past, too. Sure. Um, he supported Gore. Right. Paul switched Jesus parties, and too. And you were 47th in the nation in job creation. During that same period of time, we created 29. Oh, all right, his context is. Insane. All right, all right. You know what? I you know what? I could cut Rick Perry a new one there actually because Texas is what number when it comes to education? No, you're wrong. Ooh, I'm glad you brought up uh, this proof on education in Texas. And it's more jobs, but with regards to track record in the past, Governor, you were the chairman of Al Gore's campaign. All right, and see now, Mitt Romney, which. See, I thought that too when he first spoke, and that means Mitt Romney didn't listen to the rest of what Rick Perry was saying. Rick Perry's con, I, admit, I just made the mistake too because I said, Rick Perry, you comforted yourself, but his context was what you did as governor. And so Rick, Mitt Romney agrees with me on, on my mistake and listening to what Rick Perry just said first, but didn't follow. 
he just shut off when I listened to Rick Perry's rest of the statement. Rick Perry did and misunderstands what Rick Perry just said. And there was a fellow, there was a fellow, fellow Texan named George Bush running. So if we're living in the past, I think we know who you were. Second, he was talking about your governorship. Dave. Really? Our unemployment rate, I got down to 4.7%. No, you didn't. Pretty darn good. I mean, Dave, you're tied with, with Governor Romney in some of the polls for the, the top leadership position right now. Uh, are, is they, are they the ones, are either Governor Perry or Governor Romney, are they the ones who uh, should be president? No, I should be president, obviously. <laughs> Barack Obama will be a one-term president. There's no question about this. We all just want to be, we need to listen. Okay. But, uh, you know, on that last comment, I want to make a, a state before we get into what you want to talk about and the education thing. Uh, you know, while Obama's approval rating may be low, and regardless of whether you love or hate the Democrats or love or hate Obama, I'm not count. I, I'm not gonna make a statement on this, but I'm not counting them out either because right now. Um, while he may have high disapproval, you know, there's the country's pretty galvanized right now. I think it's possible for him to get reelected. And if if you're well, one look, of the people who mathematically he has a chance, but I mean, if we're going to go for empirical evidence, he's really followed the path of Jimmy Carter's trends, and I mean, it doesn't look good. And, and that's why his own party doesn't really associate with him. I mean, like when he's on stances and things like that, they. He doesn't have any co-sponsors and things. And the, the, he's empirically following a path that is not. It can change overnight because politics can change within. A We're week. a year out. I There's know, a exactly. lot of things that could happen. Obama is a very hey, charismatic hey. speaker. People right. are looking to lynch somebody. It doesn't necessarily mean him. All right. All right. Now let's get to Texas education. Woo! I love this topic because I've convinced so many liberals. And, and, and where they I hope you're not accusing me of being a liberal. <laughs> so, I know, but, all right. The statistics for what the college um, education systems have is that yeah, there is a, it is a statistic based on a four-year graduation rate, and that goes for high school and college. Um, it's a, it's a four-year statistic, if you want to follow it, and I have all the PDFs if anybody wants to ask. And what happens is that the, the states with the highest graduation rates, ironically, have the least diverse demographic. Take Vermont, for instance. When you re research their statistics, they have white and other. Or it'll say white and Native Indian. And that's it. And then, the, and then they'll have, within four years, like uh, a 72% rate or whatever. Okay? Texas has like California, one of the, 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 the largest diverse um, demographics. So, and so we need to, like I said, I'm going to the caveat. The states that have the highest graduation rates are the ones with the least amount of diverse demographics. And what I'm getting at is what the challenges like New York, California, Texas, anybody with a, a tremendous amount of weight in, 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 in diversity contends with differing results in how they should be educated and, or how people need to be educated. Now, I, one thing I will say is that... I'm not I, sure I agree with the premise. That's true. It's true. For instance, I, because I was part of this, ESL, English as a Second Language, is one of the most predominant um, uh, education factors for Texas. And, and that's a program I happen not to agree with. I am a big fan of the total immersion. All right, well, let's educate them in English. My parents... Our U.S. citizens were born in New Hampshire and their first language was French. My parents learned English in school. So French wasn't their fucking first language. And they learned English in school. If someone immigrates here, who the fuck is going to teach them English? It, I mean... No, no, no. I, I don't... Okay, here, here, here's the part I disagree with, okay? Yes, the school can teach them English. Where I have a problem with is, uh, particularly at the grade school level, um... If you have not passed, say, fourth grade English, you shouldn't be taking fifth grade English till you pass fourth grade English. If English isn't that's your first that's language, that's if English isn't your first language and it's going to take you a little longer to get it, that's okay. That's okay. But you need to learn. Thank you. You prove my point, Rusty. Because that's just it. What did I, what did I start this conversation with? The statistics are based on a four-year graduation rate. 
English as second language as a second language cannot fit in that category. If they are already behind by not understanding English, they'll never have a four-year graduation period. Isn't that ironic? That means it's going to take them longer than four years. It doesn't mean that that does not mean that they're not graduating. So. What we can take from the statistics. Well, the other statistic that you don't keep track of in what you're talking about is um, people who take a break. Well, okay, but that's at the high school level. They, you don't take a break at the high school level, yeah. at least not right. legally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so here, but isn't it ironic that Texas graduates more Hispanics than California and New York? What does that mean? That means the Texas education system is not broken, as a nation would say. We may not get them graduated in four year period, but we're getting them graduate. Because English as a second language does take longer than four years to get through. And that's what, a, if people would just simply dive into what the statistics are and what they are founded on, you would see this. You cannot measure something on four year periods, especially if the English is not their first language. But yes, the states that are number one and number two. Why are they number one and number two? Because their demographics are all fucking white. You know? And are all, and are all, it's all American originated in two classes. There's some, there were these statistics, and these, and these states only have two fucking classes. They don't, even, they don't even list black or anything else. Now, I will say something that's ironically about statistics that are both, that are all in New York, California, and Texas, is that Asians are the dominant. Asians dominate as the highest graduating statistic in all three of our states. This is becoming a very racist conversation. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm saying what the results are because liberals love to break shit out in a race. Okay? Because, because I will tell you this, the argument about Texas having a poor education stems from the liberal side, not the conservative side. So... Uh, well, I, I, okay, um, I have mixed feelings on the Texas education system. And that I, I don't know, I, I, I agree with what you're saying about the statistics are skew. And that, that we, the reality is we don't measure those statistics properly. However, uh, would you honestly sit here and argue with me that the primary education system in Texas or the rest of the United States is particularly adequate? Okay, so now you're saying, as a whole, is the United States education system up to par? Could it, or could it be better? Of course it could be better. I think that tremendous amount of what should be learned in the lower grade levels is actually being wasted in what people pay at the college level to relearn. I, college, I would say that 48% of what people pay at the college level, which is expensive as fuck, is shit they should have learned at lower levels of education. Uh, personally, I would argue a six to eight year old is capable of learning algebra if you teach oh, it to them. Uh, but th 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 that's one of the things I don't like about our educational system. It's built on the idea of teach it to them simple, teach it to them wrong, then correct it, then correct it, then correct it, then send them to college. Right. And, and yeah. Well, yes, and I will explain what's happened. So our education system has gone to the least common denominator. Primarily is why you don't agree with ESL. Because we do make ESL standards, global standards many times for the rest of the students. Uh, and, and you are right. And that's probably why you dislike the program. And that's not the program's fault. It's, it's people that say, well, look, you are not any less of a person because English is not your first language. But we should... You, well, but see, that, that goes to something that's gone horribly awry. For some reason, we've equated um, you are having trouble with a topic to you are worthless as a person. And those two have nothing to do with each other. Okay, right. you're right. not good at math, you're not good at English, or you're, you're having trouble with something. There is nothing wrong with being in a remedial class if you need to be in a remedial class on a topic you're having trouble with. There's nothing fucking wrong with that. There are people who can start in a remedial class because they need the remedial help and wound up being the valid Victorian, one of the smartest people in the not because they got the remedial help. The fact that you're in a remedial doesn't necessarily even mean that you're dumb. It means you're having trouble with this topic. That's all it means. And that's exactly. all it should I mean. I know. And, 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 and see, the thing of it is is that it shouldn't be... If it, we shouldn't hold back other students that excel for the sake of the lower, lowest common denominator. 
And the thing of it is, is that they're not the lowest common denominator because they're stupid. It's big. Look, if English is not your first language, by golly, you have a, a larger hill to climb than somebody who is already inherently understands English. And you are not a dumb person for it. Actually, as a matter of fact, you are taking on a larger workload than that other individual who, who coasted through it, who doesn't have to actually learn another language to learn the material. Well, and, and then there's people who adopt that policy and saying you're not a misfit because you don't speak English and you're taking longer to graduate. Yeah, we, we just need to understand that it's okay to let other people excel and let them advance at a, a faster pace, and say it's okay for people that it takes longer to say yes, we're going to work with you. And you know what? If you didn't, if you didn't graduate in four years, okay, you didn't graduate in four years. It's not the end of your life, and it's not a bad thing. But we're going to get you graduated. Yeah. Well, and see, and then there's people who learn differently. I mean, there's there's a number of topics, and, and, and this is not me saying you know bad teacher. It's me saying bad teacher for me. There, there's a number of topics I had trouble with, and part of it was it wasn't that the instructor was a bad instructor. It was the way they taught the topic was bad for the way I learned the topic. And that, you know, that's something you can not necessarily get right for every student the first time, but you can quickly figure it out and straighten it out. And, and you know, if you have to go, if you have to go through some, I mean, I, I argued that when I was in uh, school with the you know, advisors and everything. I said, look, I get it now, but there's no way in hell I'm going to have a passing grade in this class. They let me take Cal 2 without having passed Cal 1. I got a B in Cal 2, I got an A in retaking Cal 1, because I understood the material, but there was no way I was going to pull a passing grade out, because it towards like the last three weeks of the class, I go, I get it now, but God, the way he was teaching it, oh my God. Like, now that I got it, I knew it was wrong, and I told it to the thing. I'm like, you need to understand something. He's teaching this concept this way, which I can see, I get what he's getting at, but unless you are, unless you think about it this way, you're never going to get it. And not everybody thinks that way. <laughs> so, but, you know, again, that's... That's, that's, that has to do with our education, educational system. We, we separate the science and the maths that have a lot to do with each other. I've never understood that. Uh, because there's people who only learn by being able to visualize the whole concept. You know, there's plotters and there's leapers. There, uh, personally, I've never understood why they don't combine um, uh, Sine, cosine, and the science of waves. You know, why don't they teach the two of those together? Well, I'll answer that. I'll answer that. The thing of it is that, logistically, let's think about this. Yes, the thing is, is that there is a norm uh, that society forms on its own, by its genetically or what have you, that there is going to be a majority of the way somebody does X, Y, and Z. And, and then we'll make it specific. There is a, there is a majority mass of people that can, will, can learn X, Y, and Z. History. And you're absolutely right. There are also X, Y, and Z that don't learn that way and they fall the cracks. And so how do we manage that becomes a question. Because it, it, it does become costly when education gets it's super specific to where we can teach all variations of X, Y, and Z. Now, if we can find a way to do that, there I, I I have been fortunate enough in my life to meet people that are legitimate teachers who have that art. They have the ability to simultaneously teach to the plotters, the leapers, the 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 the, 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 the visual, the, the the. But that is an art. That is a that is an art form. Is that the, if you've ever seen that art form in action, you're like, you have an appreciation for what that art form is. I have, in my life, met three legitimate teachers who that is their art. They can do it. They can cover them all. But damned if the, those people aren't rare. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, is that when money's involved, which is a limited resource, and you know, the culmination of You make everything a complex. Because it is, Rusty. I know, but... <laughs> because it's, you know why people don't like it? It's because economics are it's cold. It is. It's because... It's cold, and I, I, I hate to break it to you, Marcel, but most people 
don't look at the universe in an analytical way. They look at it in an emotional and a sign. Right. And, and when you reduce it to an economical argument, you're looking at it in an analytical, matter-of-fact way. And that that is not the way people on average tend to look at the universe. I don't, I'm not disagreeing with it, but when you reduce it to the quantifiable variable like that, that is what you're doing. <laughs> Exactly, I know. And, and, and so because, you know how I arrived at that is because I, I started off being an artist, very passionate, and, and wanted to help everything, and was was extremely frustrated on why I couldn't make it happen. So I had to understand why I couldn't make it happen. And that's why I am where I am. Now, I encourage anybody on the emotional level, and, and myself included emotionally, to... And that's why, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate, and I will side with Al Gore. Yes, Marcel just said he would side with Al Gore. Um, the side, the side, because he's a big proponent of nanotechnology. Um, anything, if you, because if you truly want to rid us of these feeble arguments of where we try to strive for emotional analytics, you'll never win until you eradicate the need for the analytics. And that is, don't make things scarce. We need to utilize technology and innovation to marginalize resource, the distribution of that resource, consumption of, it, of that resource to where we don't have to have cold arguments about analytical facts based on scarcity and inequality because you will have eradicated the very need of that study and have created a whole new paradigm, essentially. And that's what we need to do. We need to find ways. Well, well what you're getting into now is the pragmatic approach of rather than focus on whose fault it is, work the actual problem. <laughs> the actual problem of economics is to solve the problem of inequality. Well, but okay, but to go, this is why I was saying you have to humor the argument because that is the spirit behind the argument you were saying you hate. Their logic is, we'll just make everybody equal. Sure. <laughs> but, but see, the thing of it is, is that until that technology exists, we can't argue it because the, the premise is wrong. And that's why I say the premise is wrong. And that's when we're arguing ph philosophy. And I, I admit, I am saying something philosophical. I just said it. I said, you would eradicate the need for economics. I just, I made the delineation. There's philosophy and economics. And, 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 and th th that's not entirely true because at its fundamental level, there is only so much in the universe. Which means you would still have scarcity just on a different scale. Ah! But isn't economics in contradiction with itself? For instance, economics is labeled the dismal science. Why? Because resources were supposed to run out for food umpteen times, which of, of which has not happened, which means that we are getting better at solving the equation of scarcity and inequality. But we're not quite... Well, at, at the end of the day, what you need to do is uh, to create the paradigm you're talking about, is, and this is what you're saying, create where the resources grow at a rate quicker than consumption. However, that... The resources. The resources is, 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 is resources distribution of those resources. And the okay, resources and the infrastructure to distribute them at a rate greater than the need. However, that, that paradigm you're talking about would eventually run out because the universe is finite and it has a finite time span. I don't believe the universe is finite. If, 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 if the telescopes are correct, we're continually expanding, which means it's infinite. So, I, 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 I am not a... Uh, that... Well, okay, that comes down to which physics model you subscribe to and other things, because one of the ideas is that the universe is expanding, okay. but it's oh, also a finite I universe. Mean, we've, 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 already dis we've already disproved, empirically speaking, that we can overcome predicted limitations already, several times. Now, but the thing of it is, is we have not eradicated totally scarcity, inequality, and, and resource logistic consumption. But, we're, but we constantly strive to do it. Now, the thing of it is, is that no other country, really, I would say, in my opinion, has come closer to the United States. And why is that? It's because we don't take the equal outcome of those three models. We take the equal opportunity of those models and set the nodes, being us, 
as equal to each other via property. To, to have us as a mathematical equation solve itself. Versus, I mean, think about this. Well, that are, that are socialists and communists. The real mathematical model is, is that you trust greater numbers of variables, of which the liberal argument is all about diversity, to solve a, an economic equation versus central planning, which is communist and, and socialist, to a few people that govern the net. Think about that. I want, I want socialist and communists to think about that. Your economic argument is essentially is that you want to forgive the many solving the problem to just a few. Well, I, I, I will tell you what's so appealing about that, and it's a fundamental aspect of human nature, and that is, first and foremost, people don't want to be responsible for their own outcomes. People want to delegate that authority to something else so it's not their fault. It's, it, it, for, for the vast majority of the masses, um, I, I personally think, unfortunately, but it is a fact, most people uh, can't wait to give up responsibility so it isn't their fault. It happens. But I also know quite a few people that do take it on the chin and accept their own responsibility as well. Yeah. But that is the socialist versus capitalistic model. And, it, and, it's, and, it's, and, see, and see, the thing of it is, is that the bailouts and all this other shit, that's not capitalistic. I... A capitalist would truly say that those people should have gone to jail. They well, no, well, and the general theme that seems to be running through this entire conversation we've been having for uh, over an hour is um, at some point, failure became wrong, not allowed. And, exactly. and that's like, you know, it's okay to fail. I have made some motherfucking Lulu mistakes in my life. I learned something from each fucking one of them. Each damn one of them was a failure, which became a success because it was a failure. Uh, so I'm a big fan of failing. Fail often and learn from it. <laughs> but that's me. Yep. Um, it's frustrating, exactly. It's frustrating that that we have policies that start off capitalistic. And then the very things that are supposed to be the checks and balances in capitalism are superseded by socialist measures, i.e. the bailouts and protecting this and this and this it's too big to fail. And therefore capitalism can't work because... Well, well no, but see, Mar well, what, what you're getting at, like, uh, he, like here's the thing. We, we, we ha uh, and it goes back to the original thing we're saying, we don't want anybody to be poor, so we want to stack the debt so people, so people That's can't, so people can't fail. Because if they fail, they'll become poor and they'll fall down there, and we can't let that happen. That's unhuman. <laughs> so we can do the path of communism, which means we all equally fail. I don't disagree, but I, I, I'm not sure we can derail that train. That's. <laughs> well, I mean, that's essentially the mathematical outcome. Because you get to the point of central planning to be in. Think about it. You have to centrally plan, to centrally plan to compensate for the other unintended consequences that occur, which means leads to total and more finite. Meaning, what I mean by finite is that fewer and fewer people start making decisions. Well, no, but see, the, the, that's the thing. There's the there's a growing mindset in the United States right now, and and, and other people have said this. And forget if you said. Actually, I think you said it at one point. Switching to a survivalist mentality. Uh, and that is, you know, there's a debate in the United States in that do we want to let the United States continue to live? If we let her continue to live, that means she and everybody in her can still die. Because if they're living, they have the risk of dying. Then there's the, yeah, we tried living. Living's hard. Let's just survive. Yes. Let's uh, survive. Absolutely. Yeah, and, but, but it's like... It, there are there's there are people for whom survival is not enough, and there is a lot of people right now who are yeah I'd prefer to live but survival is enough, and that's kind of the other debate that's going on uh, in the country right now. You know, it's which one? Which one's going to be the future of the country? Absolutely. Man, we've gone long enough, so this should be the conclusion of our uh, first political show. 
Alright, we didn't go into all the issues and we kind of got off oh, on a... Hey, hey, we can't. We can't. Uh, no, I know. And we got off on a... Uh, on a kind of, at some point, we need to honestly take an in-depth look at all the candidates and their history and their track record and everything, which is sure. something you were starting to go into. I I know you like Rick Perry, and I know you kind of like Ron Paul. I know you don't really like Kane, but, you know, it's... I like Kane's personality. He's wrong on taxes. Okay, but you know the reality is every one of these candidates is wrong on a few things. Sure, it, absolutely, it, but again, I prioritize my economic. That, you know, well, that's because that's because of your point of view, and I'm. I, I the other thing to be looked at if you are playing the, um, the there are people who are playing the um, not wanting Barack Obama reelected, and there's people playing the wanting of. Uh, Barack Obama reelected, and one of the factors in there is okay. In a Barack Obama versus one of the current Republican candidates, which one gives the greatest outcome possibility oh, for what you want? And you need to look at that argument based on how the average voter looks at an election, not necessarily sure. an informed and, individual. And, 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 uh, I was about to stop on that. Yeah, let me say this because. The reason, I, I will surmise my Rick Perry bias, quite simply. You're a Texan. It's, no, 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 it's not because of that. <laughs> uh, it, it's because of what I just said. Sexual, I, 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 I believe it can't listen because many people get to solve mathematical equation versus few that centrally plan. Rick Perry is a states' rights person, which follows the same model. It means that many more get to contribute to helping people than fewer. If the federal government supersedes all states, on many regards, fewer people decide for the masses. If we delegate to the states to decide which are more specific to their own tailored problems, which admits to the fact, which is a reality and a fact indisputable, that Texas problems are not Massachusetts problems, are not California problems. And Vermont's benefits are not New York's benefits or Florida's benefits. We are giving more power to our country by distributing power versus centralizing it because we are able to deal with real problems in this country in a far better way than centrally planned. And that's why I have a Rick Perry bias that he's a states' rights person. The second he deviates, from distributed power model, he's no longer my favorite. End of story. Well, and there's pros and cons to that, which that's a whole nother that conversation. Enjoy yeah, that, that would... I will enjoy the debate about distributed versus central. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll stop there, and but yeah, it, th we'll go into this more. And honestly, um, one more thing before we stop the recording. I would like any of y'all that watch this to PM or comment any issues, regardless of whether you're Republican, Democrat, yada, yada. It's something that's going to be very important in the coming year is what do people think is important? You know, what are the issues you care about? And Because they all need to be looked at. And unfortunately, I, well, I wish I could trust that to happen in the traditional press that doesn't, unless you sensationalize it and put an undue bias on it, it doesn't sell. And those debates need to actually happen on the actual facts, not sensationalizing the bejesus out of them. So people are actually thinking rather than following the bouncing. Ah! <laughs> Alright. Peace out. <laughs>